Morning. I'm Beetlejuice from Reddit's Wicked Edge, and a uh, little part review, part just generic shave of the day. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, I'm just fresh out of the shower. My beer is nicely hydrated from water. I'm just dabbing on a little extra to make sure it doesn't dry out while I'm yapping. Uh, today I'm going to use the replaceable shavette style, replaceable blade shavette style uh, Parker. This is an SR2. Use a standard uh, double-edged blades that have been broken in half. Mm, some contention as to whether or not it's a true straight razor. Um, if you don't have to sharpen it, some people feel it's not a straight razor. It's 90%. If you're interested in getting into straight razors, it or the Dovo Shabat. Actually, personal preference, I prefer the Shabat. Um, work really well to teach you how to. The other thing is, it's uh, believe it or not, it's more aggressive and it's easier to hack yourself up with uh, the Parker in particular because you can get a much steeper angle than you could with a standard straight razor. So, something to be aware of. It's actually harder to learn. Um, there's Less mechanics, you're not stropping, you don't have to send it out to be honed or learn how to hone, but there's there's a bit more of the red badge potential, shall we say. So, um, two things I'm going to be showing today. One is this uh, Just for Jack Pure Badger brush, and I've already done a test drive on that when I got it. Uh, this is a week in. My initial report was it had a really heavy uh, badger smell, which most proper natural brushes do. Um, this is the glamour shot by All Things Jill. I picked this up in the health food store. Uh, I'm not sure if they have anything online or not. I haven't really researched them, but it's a good brush actually. I find the the bristles are a little long for me, but. Uh, it's perfectly serviceable. As a first brush, it'd be fine. It still has not given up a lot of hair, I think, maybe two or three since I got it, and that was it. So that beats some of the other ones that I've had, uh, Vilfix Standard. Um, still spits out a hair from time to time, so uh, it appears to be a very good quality knot that's been built, so fairly impressed with that. Yeah. The other one is, uh, I'm doing True Fit and Hills uh, Puck Soap. This is their um, traditional recipe, and no, I can't read how much I paid for that. Sorry guys. So this one comes cut for a bowl, um, a low dish bowl, unlike, uh, say, Mitchell's, which is, or uh, Colonel Conk, which is straight sided. Um, and that works quite well in just a shaving mug. Or what I'm going to do today, which is a face leather. Face leather is great if you're in a position where you don't have time or you're not really up for carrying a full uh, shaving bowl. Say for example, your, your dot bag while you're out traveling. This works much better if you have a shaving stick, Arco makes them, uh, Derby makes them. I can't speak to the Derby, I haven't played with that one. Uh, Tabac is another one. But, in a pinch, what you can do is dip one side of the puck in water, which is what I've been doing. And then, and I find you need to have your face reasonably wet for this. And then just rub a bit. You're not looking to build a lather, you're looking to use your beard to scrape off some of the soap. So you should look like this. I'm just going to lean in. Something like that. Once you have that, remove a fair amount of water from your brush. Not all of it. So it shouldn't be running, but there should be water in it. And it still smells like badger. This is one of those that's going to probably take a month or more to work out. So, ah.
got one. Okay, so start, and you have to transition left and right pretty quick because the soap will eat the moisture in the brush pretty quick. And as you can see, this right now is too dry. So just a quick dip. And I didn't move fast enough to distribute that. There we go. Two things you want to move fast because you need to work the lather up before it starts drying out your face. You need to get the water crossed left to right. And if you do it right, or at least in my case, you get enough soap built in to the bristles that you'll be able to use that to relather. Now, when you're lathering, it's not just paint this stuff on like you see in Hollywood. Yeah. It's you press in, not to the point of you know mashing it to the, the heel of the brush. Push in slightly, let it fan out, and then you are doing an orbital push. What this does, this forces the soap and the bubble matrix to the base of the follicle. And you're then providing support for the follicle. You're also encapsulating it in moisture. And the reason we harp on moisture so much, to finish, if you want, you don't necessarily have to. I uh, paint when I'm finished in the opposite direction of the growth of the beard. I find that holds it a little higher up. Anyway, um, at least I'm going to use a script so I don't forget stuff. Um, derp. The other thing, uh, you want to try and keep this as hydrated as possible. And the reason for that is, uh, beard, well any hair actually, when wet, swells. It becomes more pliable. Think of the difference between uh, dry and cooked pasta. It gets larger, it gets easier to cut, it doesn't break. And as a result, you have to use less force and less pull to accomplish the same goal. And this is one of the reasons why cartridge or I shouldn't say cartridge, it's not cartridge huh. I do not like that blade something is not right here and just so that you can see once the two are pulled apart there's the blade so, throw that in my safe. I'm going to throw a feather in this thing, which means you're probably going to get blood. I don't do well with this and feather blades. So, but sharp is the order of the day. By the way, leave it in the package and bend it. And if you only unwrap one side, typically there's enough, at least with the feathers, there's enough uh, glue or wax or whatever this is to hold the other blade so it doesn't get loose in the bathroom. Of course, put it somewhere where it's not going to get loose. And uh, the blade itself slides back onto these two copper tangs. This piece, and I'm sorry, but I will have to turn this around so I can watch what I'm doing. Let's see if I can turn this so you can watch. This back piece then comes up. Those two copper pins lock in. Your blade is now captured. And then the separation gear gets locked in. And let's try that again. This is one of those examples of, if it doesn't feel right, you stop. Find out what's wrong. That's yeah, much better. For those of you screaming, that was not a dry pass. I just had the heel touching. Okay.
Um, yeah. Anyway, Carter shaving goo. Your over-the-counter can stuff typically does not have a lot of moisture in it. They have what they call moisturizers. And that's either oils, uh, glycols, glycerins, whatever. And they're designed and it is a lubricant absolutely but it's not moisture which means that your beard is actually sitting dry so they also add in things like menthol and so on to mask the burn and pain now does it work? Yes. Is it better? Yeah. At least in my experience. So, that was a with the grain pass for the most part. And this is very, very light pressure, by the way. Um, Never really been able to come up with a good analogy for how gentle this is. I heard one person say it's about the same pressure that you'd use taking out your contacts, followed by somebody else that said, You've obviously not had to take out my contacts. Um, it takes time to get the balance. It's, in my opinion, uh, it's just enough that if it snags a hair, it won't skip. But not so much that you're actually deforming the skin. No, oh, I must be using a feather blade. <laughs> Now that I've established that I am tagged in a couple of places, it's a quick shot with a styptic pencil should knock that down. By the way, if you use a styptic pencil while you're shaving, let's see if I can show you something. Just for the hell of it. See that? Nothing flattens styptic, or nothing flattens leather like styptic. I'm sure there's a really cool explanation for why. Let me just show that again. The solution is you wipe it off before you re-lather. So as for the soap itself, um, it lathers very well, gives a nice rich lather, nice matrix, it's not prone to collapse, seems to uh, have fairly long legs in terms of uh, watch this. Stubborn. So and you just only wipe some of that off with my palm. So let's see. Just so that I can be 100%. Here we go, looking good. Gone. So, something to watch for when you're lather. Oh, one other thing. Uh, styptic uh, on area will make the blade drag and more prone to skip. Be careful if you're using it while you're shaving. Other than that, uh, back to what I was saying, uh, the True Fit and Hill soap. It's a bit of a floral note. Uh, I've never been good at decrypting exactly what it smells like, but it's not, you know, you're not going to smell like an air freshener has been running in here for, you know, a week or anything. It's a typical, classic, gentle, 
light scent. Now, this is a uh, Allen block, and this is just simply to dry out the skin so it tightens a little bit and acts as a bit of a sterilizer for any uh, little tiny weepers that I might have. I lose hair there. And my mustache needs to be trimmed. I don't talk while I do this. Hmm. So yeah, um... I mean, True Food and Hill have been around for, well, I think I saw in the back of the packet something like the Battle of Trafalgar, so. They're hardly a fly-by-night company. Something like that. And of course, my usual rant, I live in a fairly dry environment. So my post shave takes the form of a couple of drops of pure jojoba oil. And the only reason for that is it's uh, it's a wax ester. It's about the same uh, as human uh, skin oil or sebum, if you will. And I find that uh, it keeps me from going all scaly. And depending on your taste, you can either walk away at this point. Actually, you could have walked away before that. Anything that I do after the shave is whatever works for you. And there's some experiment to find it. You know, everything that's going to work for you. There's a lot of variables here. Uh, what I've got on my hands right now is uh, Bay Rum Aftershave, homemade. Search for Bay Rum on Wicked Edge, you will find. Uh, my recipe, or Manliness has one. And there you go. Ta-da! So, uh, True Fit and Hill soap, absolutely. Um, a week into the uh, Just for Jack brush, I'd absolutely recommend that. I think that was in the $35 range, so it's not a bank breaker. Um, as you can see, Parker Shave, as good as it ever is. Uh, don't mind the fact my skin's turning red, that I can do that with a bare hand. It's not an indication of how harsh a shave is. If you want to find out how bad a shave is, just uh, go back over the tape and watch my run the Allen block over my face. If the eyes start bugging out, it was a rough shave. This one wasn't bad. So, um, there you go. Till next time, I'm Beetlejuice from Reddit's Wicked Edge. Keep them sharp.